talking on relationships and how do you maintain and uh, build and empower your relationships. And we have some great information for you. Uh, but before we get started, I want to get you excited to share and like because we got some great prizes going on out there for you. Some great gifts we're giving away. Uh, first, for the uh, for five lucky people that put their register through Phoenix National Business Group uh, dot com, you go to our theater page and register there. You have uh, you'll be entering for a chance to receive a gift of a hundred dollars. And that's for five people that register through phoenixnationalbusinessgroup.com slash theater. Uh, you, see it on the, you see it on the banner in front. So don't miss out, share and like with your friends. You don't want anybody to miss this opportunity. So uh, put, in, put in, register through Phoenix National for the next two weeks as we're running these programs and you enter for your chance to win that prize. Also, we have something else exciting going on. If you are if you retain the services of anyone that is within uh, the program or within the network, you will receive an uh, fifty dollars uh, for uh, retaining their services. So that also is exciting, exciting news. Uh, you don't want to miss out on that opportunity. So when you see their phone number. You want to make sure you write it down uh, because once you register, you're going to have that chance to uh, gain that gift and that prize. So uh, we look forward to working with you. I'm sure that those who are uh, within our network will be exciting to work with you. Um, and so uh, uh, we're going to move on with our programming because we have a very special guest, which I'm going to have my friend Frank introduce. And uh, he is uh, an awesome guy as well. Frank, go ahead and uh, let's get started. Thank you everyone for watching. I need you to unmute, Frank. Here we go. Hello everybody, my name is Frank Apollo. I'm very excited to be here and I'm very excited to be interviewing Dr. Gerald Gargiulo, as we like to call him, Jerry. And um, if it's not too much of an inconvenience, I'm going to read his bio, which is enormously impressive. So Dr. Gerald Gargiulo has been practicing for over 40 years as a psychoanalyst and psychotherapist. He's the former president of the Training Institute of the National Psychological Association for Psychoanalysts and a former president of the International Forum for Psychoanalytic Education. He's the author of over 100 peer review articles and has authored four books. His latest book, Quantum Psychoanalyst, won the Gradiva Award for the best psychoanalytic book, 2017. He's, the editor, he's on the editorial boards of major journals and is lectured nationally and internationally. He is a member of the American Psychoanalytic Association and the International Psychoanalytic Association. He maintains a practice in Stanford, Connecticut, as well as in New York City. Hi, Jerry. How are you today? Hello. Hello, Frank. How are you? How is, uh, how is uh, Stanford today? Is the weather better than the other day? Sunny and beautiful and inviting. Okay. Ah, so I'm glad we're here. Yeah. So everybody, you know, this is going to sound a little silly, but we are constantly always in relationship to other people as well as to other things that are in our lives. But today we're going to be talking about relationships between individuals. Uh, they're not going to necessarily be work, family, or school as such, but they will be um, in relationships, intimate relationships, or just friendly relationships. So, um, so let me ask you, Jerry, what makes a relationship work? Ah, uh, if only it was that simple, uh, Frank. Mm. <laughs> Look, uh, relationship, everything that we do really goes out of who we are. And who we are means who we consciously are and, and a lot of what we unconsciously are. And when I say unconsciously, 
What I mean is that all of us go up with a hundred different experiences in our life, a hundred different relationships, uh, all of which form us, most of which we forget, some of which we just push out of mind. Okay? So when we, a relationship really highlights the complexity of what it means to be alive, what it means to be human. Okay? So that's a kind of preface, lest I sound too simple in giving an answer. Okay? Basically, what helps a relationship, what, what, what is going to, what, one of the norms that we can use to know whether this relationship is uh, growing, whether it's just a friendship, or whether it's even a business relationship, or whether it's a romantic relationship, depends on our capacity to feel that we can also cross-identify with the person. Now, what does that mean, cross-identify? It means that we are able to put ourselves in his or her place and understand them internally, not just externally, okay? Not just commenting on their looks or their accomplishments or whatever, but we're able to feel who they are as people and to feel a sense of having a bridge with them, that there's a mutual bridge between both of us. So I don't know if that, that helps at all, but that's... No, no that, make, that makes a, it helps a great deal and it makes a lot of sense. When you say that there's an emotional bridge between the two, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Yeah, well, that's, it seems to me that that's one of the essence of a relationship, okay? That if a relationship grows, well, again, whether it's a friendship relationship, maybe even a business relationship, but certainly a romantic relationship, it means that we're able to find common ground. That's why I think why I use the image of a bridge, common ground between myself and another person. Okay? That, that uh, when I do marriage counseling, one of the most initial, one of the most important things is to let each party of the marriage talk about their childhood and growing up, their pains and their joys. And believe it or not, many times the spouse may not have heard all the details. Okay? Really? And, and yes, and in hearing the details or even in hearing the details once again in a different context enables a person to feel certain sense of empathy. Empathy means I'm able to put myself in another person's shoes. Okay? Yeah. And in a relationship, we have to be able to do that. We have to be able to put ourselves in another person's shoes. Hopefully, it's a mutual experience. Okay? And we understand them not just in terms of who they present themselves are, but what makes them particularly themselves. Okay? So yeah. that's what yeah. I mean by cross-identification. So, so you mentioned so that we're really exploring the internal life of, of an individual um, as well as the external life of an individual. That's you're right. That's right. That's right. Okay. And, and a relationship is, can, can I find, am I able to build this bridge? People say, well, how do I know if it's a good relationship? So I, are you able to build a bridge to another person and vice versa? Or do you find that you can't? that there are too many differences, that too many areas where the bridge seems to go nowhere, okay, if you know what I'm saying. Sure, right? sure. Well, given that statement, why does it always seem relationships not to work? Uh, I wish I could give that a really quick answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, very we have a little bit of time here. Very satisfied and multimillionaire at the same time. Yeah. Okay. So in terms of why don't relationships work, uh, obviously, very variable, obviously, many, many different answers, okay? Um, uh, let me back up. The older we get, I think the more I understand that really we're, we're here, of course we have to live and of course we have to have money, we have to have shelter, we have to take care of our children, of course, basic. But we're here really to create ourselves. The goal of life is not to find some meaning outside of us. The goal of life is to find some meaning inside of us. That we progressively, I don't care if we're 20 or if we're 92, we have to continue to try to create ourselves who we want to become. Okay? That's what really keeps us alive. 
And of course we need house and food and a certain amount of money, obviously. But the goal of life is to find out who we are and also simultaneously to help create ourselves. Uh, I don't think our particular Western society focuses on that enough. Okay? We focus it on accomplishment rather than on journey. And yet life is basically a journey, not just accomplishment. Okay? Not how big a house or what you've, how much money you have or what you've accomplished. Of course those are important. I know that. Okay? They're very important, but they're very important secondarily. Very important, but secondarily. Okay? Primarily is, who am I? Who do I want to become? Okay? And why don't relationships work? That's a very, very open question. Obviously, you know that. I can't answer. It depends on the, on the individuals. But a lot of times, it's because we're not sure who we are. And if we're not sure who we are or what we're doing, then it's very difficult to have a relationship. It's not bad. I'm not saying a person is bad. I'm just saying they're confused. They don't know who they are yet. And therefore, you can't make that bridge. That's right. You can't make it's very hard to make the bridge. Very hard to make the bridge. And then you wind up maybe blaming the other person that they don't understand you. That's right. That's exactly correct, Frank. Exactly correct. Yeah. So the so blame and shame and those issues come into play yep. in the relationship. They may be affected by each other. Yes. Like what you're saying if you don't understand who you are. It's very difficult to really have a meaningful relationship. That's right. And, then, and that's absolutely what you said is absolutely basic. Secondary also is, uh, and I'm saying the obvious here, but sometimes we have to say the obvious. Our society moves too fast. Sometimes people make dif- decisions too fast. Okay. One, well, you have to work at relationships. The most basic way you have to work at the relationship in yourself. Who am I? Really, what do I want? What kind of a person do I want to be? What do I want to accomplish? It? Accomplish not only outside, obvious things we want to accomplish. Inside, how do do I know who I am? And meeting such and such, will this person help me know who I am and help me be better along the road of who I am? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah. So. It's, it seems to me that the question I had asked is why does it seem not to work? You've, you've answered it in such a way that has me thinking about my past relationships that you would expect when you meet somebody that at the very beginning that you have similarities and it's really terrific. But over time, you could see that how that might be breaking down given what you had just said. Yes, 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 yes. And the similarities have to, I like the image of the bridge because the similarities have to be a bridge that make us understand each other deeper, okay? okay. So, it's, so it goes back and forth. Yes, and, but that takes work. It ter- you don't find the right person. I don't think that happens. You both create the right person. Ah, that's a great word. You create okay. the right person. So then the relation is, there's a relationship, are you allowing yourself to be created? And are you in a relationship where you can create? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, beautifully said, beautifully said. So if that's the case, we've got short-term relationships. What does it take to, you know, what does it take to have a long-term relationship? I mean, you've had a very long-term relationship with Julia and for years and years and years and i have other friends of mine who have relationships you know 40 years i have a relationship with diane it's like close to 30 years what does it take to have a long-term relationship a a good luck serious yeah good luck yeah luck okay Uh, 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 patience and in my case a forgiving wife okay <laughs> that 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 relationships is is very mutual okay not that we didn't have serious disagreements at times we did we were alive we had disagreements okay but i really said one i think it's a matter of good luck okay 
uh, two, whether you have people who understand who want the relationship to work, who can be real and yet forgiving at the same mm. time. Real means I don't have to give up who I am. Forgiving means I understand who you are. Okay? Uh -huh. okay? You don't yeah. have to be perfect, so I have a perfect relationship. Okay? Okay? I have to be forgiving towards you. I have to be forgiving towards myself. Yeah. Okay? Forgiving also means I'm able to say I'm sorry. Okay? You'd be surprised how many in relationships people have difficulty just saying, I'm sorry. I was a jackass. I said something foolish. I was thoughtless. I was uh, preoccupied when I should not have been preoccupied. Right. And I apologize. Okay. And it takes a lot of courage to be able to say that to somebody. It takes a lot of courage, but it's also very free. It, it makes you, it, it frees you. You don't have to hold it inside yourself, a, a, a false sense of self worth. Yeah. Okay? You, you, we're all on common ground. We're all just children of the earth, so to speak. Okay, and so mm. when you say "I'm sorry," you establish common ground. Okay, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. hopefully yeah, without, without giving that, up yourself. That's right. Hopefully, the other person's able to hear it. If they're not able to hear it, they may, may not be on common ground themselves, and they have to work towards that. Mm. Mm. Fabulous. Is a relationship worth the price for accommodating another person, for instance? Well, I don't think you're real. Uh, this sounds very absolute, but relationships make us real. They're not external to us. Man is a relational kind of creature. Why are we suffering so much with this virus? Because we've been told we have to stay separate. We have to stay in our house, protect ourselves. Uh, even when I see my children, I see them outside for the most part. Okay. I can't hug them because I might possibly be carrying this virus and not even know it, right? right? That is why this is such a strain. It's not just that we might get sick from the virus or very sick from the virus. It's that it's interfered with a basic human need to connect with other human beings. Mm. That is not secondary. That's primary for human beings, right? So how, how, it's a great point you brought up with the pandemic. How are you able to maintain the relationships when, you know, you really can't touch anybody? You, it's, it's at a distance. Just by its nature, it's at a distance. So how do you manage that? Because a lot of people are, are, are at home alone and they have to, you know, be with themselves to find out who they are. But then again, they have family members and um, this distance must have some sort of effect on people. How do you manage that? Yeah, yes. I, I think the first thing you say is, you say what it is. Namely, boy, I'm in a really difficult place. I'm finding this very difficult. I don't like being this lonely. This is very isolating. I only can talk to my kids, maybe make sure we're outside, okay? Or I talk to them on the phone or talk to them via Zoom. Okay? And mm -hmm. I'm finding it extremely difficult and very painful. So yeah. it, it, when we're in a difficult situation, it's important not that we collapse in it, but that we name it so we know where we are. Okay? Okay? And then name it in the sense of, okay, this is such a potentially serious disease that I simply have to try to endure this mm -hmm. okay? Okay? until we get to the end of it. Yeah. Okay? And the and what's important, and we go back to, you know, building the bridge to be able to share that with the other person. Okay. First, at first, you be aware of that. How is that affecting you? Right. But then again, you have to share that with whomever that may be. Right. And that's the value. And go back and forth with that. Yes. Because if someone just is within themselves and they hold themselves back for whatever the reason may be, let's say fear or something like that, that becomes difficult uh, for, I would imagine, long -term, um, maintaining a long-term relationship. Yes, yes it is, okay? So that it's the same, you can say to yourself and to the other person or persons, you know, this is where I am 
this is what I need vis-a-vis -vis the, the virus. You know, I, I've spoken a lot on the phone with my friends and just said to them how difficult it was, but at least I had to hear their voice, okay? Yes. And when you name it and not deny it, okay, you're able to handle it more. Yes, it sure. is difficult, okay? Then on the other hand, every once in a while, I watch when there's a terrible tornado and people have their house blown away, I say, this is not so difficult. That's difficult. Yes. This is a little bit hard. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, without a doubt. Sure. And that's where that empathy comes in. Yeah. You put yourself in another person's place in that horrible circumstance. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, someone said to me the other day um, about animals that they're, that they, they gather together, they're, they're pack animals. So given the fact that we're animals, um, we need relationships based upon the fact, the fact that we are pack animals. Mm -hmm. um, so again, what's the price that one needs to have or for their personal, dealing with their personal preferences for companionship and love? Because what we are talking about is companionship and love. Wouldn't you say? Right. Say that a little differently, Frank, what you're asking me. The question is, are we willing to pay the price to give some personal, to give up some personal preferences for companionship and love? That's, that, that. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Relationship means that, um, well, when we're lucky, when we're lucky and the relationship is working, we understand what satisfies the two people or more, what satisfies the two people is ultimately more gratifying than what I think satisfies myself. Ah, yes. Okay? And that I'm willing to take maybe a little less of what I think I need in order to find something even more than I need. And that's what a relationship is. It gives us more than we need when it's working. I'm well aware that sometimes relationships, there's disagreements, there's anger, there's fights. Of course there is. That's, that I'm not speaking some Pollyanna nonsense, okay? But if you have a basic commitment to sharing your life with someone, you work very hard. Sometimes it doesn't work, I know that. But you work very hard to make those disagreements secondary, okay? Yes. Real. We don't have to pretend they're not real, but they're secondary, they're not primary. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I can see the real, I can see how even in business, um, that kind of sensitivity is, is essential. Like I had a business and I had a partner and we were very lucky because we, I don't believe we ever really argued about anything. It was, um, he did what he did. He was a director and I did what I did, an executive producer. And that separation allowed us both to appreciate each other. And, um, and in that regard, the relationship works. And I think what you're saying is that appreciation really plays a big part in this. That's correct. Correct. That's right. Okay. Uh, and then also one has to be playfully humble. Uh, my wife was a uh, therapist herself for MSW, but before that, she was a professor of English, she had a master's in English. And so I write a lot, and she would be my editor and my, my uh, very good editor. And of course, she would make some corrections, and I would at first say that she was wrong and I was right, of course, okay? <laughs> being alive and being male, okay, because males always have to be right, okay. And of course, I would say mm, at least nine and a half times out of it, she was, of course, right. And when I went back and rewrote it or edited it, I did precisely what she said, okay. <laughs> and we would joke about that. We would joke about it, and she would joke about it. And she knew initially I had to say, no, 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 I think I voted okay here. I think it's fine. And uh -huh. she would just say, think about it. Knowing that nine times out of ten, I would think about it, and of course, I would make a correction. That's a kind of playful, this is what I mean by a playful uh, cross identification. 
she wasn't trying to up me. She was helping me. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, I hope it was a two-way street. So in, in, in saying, Dick, I really think this paragraph is a little confusing. You have to do such and such. She wasn't trying to tell me, I know how to write better than you. She was helping me write better for myself. Okay? So that's what I mean by cross identification. Hopefully, I was able to do the same for her. Okay? That, that, that's what I mean by cross identification. It doesn't sure. become a power play. Right. It doesn't become a power play. Sure. I once heard something that was very interesting, it was supposedly spoken to a friend of mine by his grandmother, who was in her 70s. And he was, um, he was about to get married. And he said, Grandma, because she had a good relation of grandma what what do I need to know and she said she says I give you three words hobbies and habits if you can find people that have similar hobbies and habits you'll be okay which I thought was I thought was a pretty interesting perspective it wasn't like you didn't can't have disagreements but sharing those things were very important yes. for example what you just said about uh, Julia and yourself yes yeah. Yes. Okay. And and areas areas of uh, even though I put areas of admiration, areas of admiration for each other, mm. very important. Yeah. yeah, I can appreciate that. Yeah. Well, Jerry, I want to tell you this has been a really wonderful conversation, and I'm so glad that uh, you took the time to have this interview with us, sure. and. Um, I'm hoping that um, people will contact you. Jerry, would you mind giving your um, telephone number? No. Oh, my, my professional office number is 203-406-7070. Okay. And uh, would it be too inconvenient to give your email address as well? Oh, it's all over the internet, actually. If anyone goes on my website, which is just drgargiulo.com, just D R G A R G I U L O dot com, Dr. Gargiulo. All my information will be there. Fantastic. You know what? I think I'll give my telephone number and email address. So my number is 646 295 5625. And uh, my email address is Frank, F R A N K. Capola, C O double P like Peter, O L A zero one at Gmail. Again, Jerry, thank you so very, very much. I'm going to turn it over for Philip now. Okay. Philip, my please pleasure. Pick, you pick it up. Yep. Our, our present. Okay. Thank you so much, Frank. Thank you so much, Jerry, Dr. Jerry. Really appreciate you guys coming on and sharing uh, those great points program today. I'm sure that uh, we have folks that are listening and will be listening because uh, we'll be repeating this program again. And uh, please let me know if anyone reaches out to you. When they reach out, they're going to give you the code PNBG, which is Phoenix National Business Group in short. And this way we'll know that they uh, once they become a client of yours, just let us know and we'll make sure that they get uh, the gift that we're offering for uh, doing business with our network. So thank you everyone for watching. Again, uh, make sure you register at phoenixnationalbusinessgroup.com uh, and in our theater site uh, where you'll be watching the program. And so that we can get the information and get the uh, gift out to you, to those lucky five people that are going to receive it. All right, thank you again, and we will see you